Welcome to Share Views, and I'm joined by Patrick Birdie, who's CEO at Next Exchange. How are you today, Patrick? Very well, Zach. Thank you for having me here. Right, you were here earlier in the year. Just uh, you had the rebranding going on. A new year, new look, new feel. Um, How is it going? It's it's going well, Zach. Again, you know, it's it's getting the name out there and being able to talk about the story and being able to engage with the community. We're getting a very very good reaction. It's been um, encouraging, and people are you know starting to get more involved. We've got some more corporate advisors joining us, um, and we have a pretty decent pipeline of new companies coming in or coming or who we hope will be coming on board over the next few months. Well, so that's the thing. I mean, it, it, looking back to the days of AIM twenty years ago and the various incarnations be before of that. I mean, you can sort of come to the conclusion that an exchange, a stock exchange, is as good or bad as the companies on it. Is that a fair thing to say? It's a difficult one. I mean, again, a, you know, stock exchange is going to be a, an accumulation of different companies. And, and for us, I mean, we are really focused on growth companies, um, you know, entrepreneurial, hopefully fast growing. But also they are entrepreneurial. We will, we will have failures and we will have companies that won't go so well. So I don't know that it's entirely fair to, to, to if you're a successful stock exchange because you've got successful companies on you, that's not, not necessarily the case. It has to be a combination of different companies in different parts of their cycle. Right, but for instance, you've got Chapel Down there. If Chapel Down becomes the next... Um, you know, Diageo, then obviously, or the next fever tree, that would transform, well, that would change the picture, wouldn't it? it, well, it well, it would, but again, I, that would, the credit for that wouldn't be with me, the credit would, would be with Chapel Down, who, as you say, are a fabulous company. They've done extremely well with us. And, you know, only three years ago, they were raising money at 29p, and, and the shares today, I think, are trading at 94. So it's a really fantastic success story. But I mean, turn, to change the question slightly, I mean, uh, having a company which is a poster child for or, you know, for, of you know, growth of or whatever, is is then will attract other entrepreneurs and CEOs, won't it? So that's really the the, the angle that I was going for. Oh no, I agree. And I, yes, of course. And again, companies like Chapel Down are fantastic examples of how you can, you know, get involved in a public market, how you can get evangelist shareholders supporting your product, and how they can be rewarded through the growth in your shares and the success of your company as well. I um, mean, the other area, which I mean, I've interviewed uh, Coin City of another company on Next uh, quite Shh. a few times. Absolutely, um, that's related to the blockchain. Bitcoin's gone through the roof. Again, isn't that sort of that's good PR for you? It's it's fabulous. And again, those are interesting companies, and they're the type of thing that investors enjoy, you know, looking at and understanding. And again, on our exchange, we're trying to encourage long-term investors to get involved, to, to do their due diligence, understand the companies, and to hopefully enjoy a, a long and successful ride as they develop. Right. I mean, and from again, from a CEO perspective, and one of the things uh, which is noticeable about Nex as opposed to um, being on the uh, the uh, your your um, the the other the alternative uh, um, exchange is that um, basically the costs of being on there or getting on there are much less. Aren't you surprised that um, shareholders in companies don't say to CEOs, oh, "Hang on, why are you going there when you could go to next and um, you know save us our money?" Well, Zach, I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, I, I, yes, I mean, those are the types of messages that we are getting out there increasingly. And I think that, you know, we're talking to the CEOs, we're talking to the CFOs, we're talking to the boards, because again, a board should be looking to their management to, to, to at how they can manage costs effectively. So I think that that message is getting out there and we are starting to get more and more people looking at it on that basis. So, but, it, you know, we also have to be cognizant. It takes time to get people to make these changes. And, and, you know, it is a long lead cycle to get the changes through and to get companies on board. I mean, the foot, you've got the FTSE at record highs. Um, is that, um, you know, clearly that's another bit of a positive um, a PR for you. Has, has the atmosphere changed this year or, has, or has it changed after Brexit in a, in a positive way for you? I, I think so. Again, I, you know, I mean, equity markets, as you say, are doing well. And I think in, in many cases there is a shortage of interesting equity investment opportunities. So I think it is a good time to be looking at the market and how one can get involved. And yes, you know, as equity cycles are, are, are certainly in a, in a very good, at a very good point at the moment, so long may it continue. Right. I mean, one of the, one of the questions I, I opened with uh, last time I interviewed you was about liquidity. Of I found out since then that a third of the companies um, um, on Next actually have better liquidity than on AIM, for instance. Yeah. 
Um, are, you, are, you, are you are you pushing that message out? We, we, I, I'm always very gentle about liquidity. I mean, as, as, as you said last time, I mean, I think that we are looking for long term, generally long term investors, and, and they want to be able to access the market when they want to, and they want to be able to exit when they, company shares when they want to. And we provide a facility that allows them to do that. Liquidity, it, it, it's, it, you know, it's trying to find appropriate liquidity for the type of company that you are. And I think that where, you know, if you want lots of trading, you're going to have to do lots of publicity, you're going to have to get that out there and tell the investors about your story. We can facilitate that, but we are equally comfortable with, with, with a number of our companies who, have, who don't actually want huge volumes of trading. They want, they're very happy having a gentle flow of occasional trades in their stock. Um, one, of the, one of the issues, I mean, at the moment, I mean, there's lots of entrepreneurs out there. Everybody wants to be the next uh, Facebook or Amazon or whatever it is. Um, what do you say um, to them in terms of what you can offer at Next as opposed to anywhere else? Well, again, for us, we think it's the start of the journey of, as a company moves from, from its early entrepreneurial roots, perhaps funded by friends and family. The opportunity to come on to Next is, is, is start, of get, start of getting their sort of corporate disciplines right. You know, they can come on with a relatively small free float, so they don't have to give up control of the company to a faceless group of investors. They can have a relatively small free float. Get into the discipline of, of having good, good board meetings, open accounts, open uh, legal records, etc., so that you're getting that discipline r ready and investors then, when they do come in, are able to see that you're a disciplined and well-organized company. And that will help you in your journey as you grow. It's the sort of thing that why not get it sorted out right at the beginning? Well, it may not be an appropriate word, but I mean, is, are you offering a more boutique service, let's say, than, than, than the alternatives? Well, I think we're, we're, we're definitely um, offering a much more involved service. So we will, we will work with a company to achieve what they want to achieve. And, and so, you know, it, we are not trying to get companies to fit themselves to us. We're trying to fit what we offer to them. So I think it is, yes, I suppose boutique is a good, uh, a good word, Zach. Thank you for offering it to me. You might hear it back at back. I try my, I try my best. Right, I mean, right, we're, we're here. We're sort of halfway through the you know, six months since you rebranded and everything else. What are the next steps? What are the things that we should look out for as far as uh, next exchange is concerned? Well, I think, again, we, as I said, we've got a couple of corporate advisors, three or four new corporate advisors joining, which I hope will ease the process of coming onto market. And then it's going to be about new companies joining us and getting involved. I mean, you know, we, we hope to have a, an increasingly uh, visible stream of companies coming through over the next few months. Um, so I hope that when I'm back here in the autumn uh, talking to you that we will have had 10 or 15 new companies joining us uh, and, and there will be some interesting story amongst, stories amongst those. And where, which, which, area, which areas do they come from? Are they from venture capitalists or crowdfunding or what's the, what's the, what's the trail of them? There's a really interesting mix, Zach, between sort of older style family companies who have been around for a long time and, and are just take, taking the next um, step on their journey. A lot of interesting IT-based companies. Um, we've got a couple of international companies uh, in the pipeline as well. So it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting spread across a, a range of sectors. But again, you know, largely entrepreneurial with thoughtful management who are conscious of costs uh, and trying to get their companies structured in a way that will allow them to grow moving forward. Right, just a couple of points just to finish on. Um, and clearly, there will be lots of companies from um, outside the UK, in the Far East or uh, Australasia or whatever, who want to have a London listing. Mm. Is, that, that, is that one of the roles of Next? Absolutely. We're, we're always happy to look at it. Uh, we, will, we are open uh, to those types of companies. We are very strict in terms of the corporate covenants and making sure that they are that they understand their obligations to investors here in the UK. Um, but, but within those boundaries, we've, you know, we've got some super companies. We just had, last year we had Degang Halal come on, who are, you know, again, a Malaysian-based company. Fantastic story, good corporate discipline. The type of thing that we like, yeah. Very and, then, and then finally, because the costs are relatively less, uh, the cash shell, is that going to appear on, on Next as one of the features? We are having a look at where the cash shells, whether we can reintroduce cash shells. I mean, I think the cash shells had a, had a, you know, a, a stigma attached to them, uh, perhaps quite rightly. I think provided they are, you know, if we can find a way to, to clearly mark them and show absolutely clearly to, to investors what they are, then, then I think that there is a role for them. But my regulatory team are working on that and I hope that we'll have some news on it soon. 
Patrick Birdie, CEO of Next Exchange, thanks for coming in today. Thank you, Zach.